and I just started to take a look at the numbers of people on the island, and I, it just drew some concern for me. So I made the phone call to the lieutenant on the island, and I said, if it's possible, contact your sheriff. We're going to need more manpower on the island. That's Putin Bay's chief of police, James Kimball, recounting the events of last Saturday, making the call to bring in SWAT teams to Putin Bay. It's a story that people will not stop talking about online. Our Michael Sandlin joining us live in studio now after a, a number of days out there at Putin Bay. And Michael, why was getting that interview so important? Well, Jeff, obviously we want to get the chief's perspective, and that's why two days ago I told our viewers we would continue going back to Putin Bay until the police chief could answer our questions. And today we're delivering on that promise. My sit down with the chief, with the chief was candid. He plainly laid out where it all went wrong and told me what needs to change. Because of the fact that we were so spread thin, we were present, believe me, the entire day, but people may or may or not saw us, depending on where they were at. Already understaffed on a regular day, Putin Bay's police chief Kimball says Saturday's massive crowds were too tall in order for his tiny department. They were tasked with trying to keep in line an estimated 19,000 visitors. I was told there was going to be three buses coming in. Um, later on, I was told there was 12 buses. Buses that poured into downtown, and by 5 p.m., it was congested with people and golf carts. Fights started breaking out, and the chief says there was no way his staff could get to it all. I have six full-timers, that's, that's year-round, and then I have seasonal workers who come in in the summer. A far cry from the 20 to 25 officers he says he would need to handle situations like this effectively. As more and more service calls came in, Chief Kimball made the decision he needed outside help. And the words given to me were that they were losing control of downtown. That's Ottawa County Sheriff Steve Lavorchik. He headed out to the island with three different SWAT teams, resulting in 18 arrests between three agencies, higher than their normal weekend arrest numbers. While things were cooled off by 9 p.m., Chief Kimball says there's always the possibility this could happen again. And next time, he wants to have enough staff to properly handle it. But he says his officers are continually being poached by bigger agencies. So they'll see a person who's been here two or three years, and then they know they've been through a lot, they've seen a lot, they've done a lot, and they snatch them up from us. And the department's reputation, including a 2020 excessive force case, might be holding back new talent from making the jump. Absolutely. You know, they see the negative, the negative side of the media when we get hit with stuff like that. And, and in some cases, not all of it's true. So it makes it tough for an officer to want to come here and start his career being concerned that they don't get a bad mark on their record. Chief Kimball says they're working with state reps to secure more funding for the department. And in the meantime, he tells me the biggest lesson they've learned from this is to keep an eye on the number of buses coming into town. Coming up tonight at 6, we'll take, an issue, take a look at an issue that stemmed from the incident that might have gone unnoticed if you haven't gotten on social media lately. The rampant racism. Reporting in studio, Michael Sandlin for WTOL 11. All right.